The fishermen sat exhausted on the seashore. It had been a long night. After countless hours of casting his net over and over again, he had nothing to show for it. Not a single fish. As he cleaned his nets, he wondered what to do next. How could he support his family? How could he pay his taxes? His exhaustion was much more than just from working all night. The weight of the world seemed to be on his shoulders. All of a sudden, he hears the noise of a large crowd heading towards him. Sitting up, he sees they are following someone. A man. The man suddenly walks straight up to the fisherman who suddenly recognizes him. This is Jesus, the great teacher who has been going throughout the Galilean countryside. Jesus asked the fisherman if he could use his boat to move a little away from the crowd so they could hear him better. He immediately says yes, and they row from the beach. Jesus talks to the crowd, but the fisherman has his mind in another place. Suddenly, he realizes that Jesus has stopped talking and is now looking at him. Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch, Jesus says. What? Is he joking? You never fish during the day when the heat drives the fish to the bottom of the lake. And hadn't he been fishing all night? Doesn't this man have a clue about fishing? The fisherman looks at Jesus and tries to explain the situation. Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. Jesus continues to stare at him, and he realizes that he's probably not going to win this argument. Better to just give in. But I will do as you say and lay down the nets. With a heave, the fisherman and his partner throw the nets over the side of the boat. Just as he's about to give a knowing look towards Jesus, the boat tilts and nearly capsizes. The water looks like it's boiling. There's so many fish. The nets begin to break, and they call over the other boat to help. Together, they get all the fish into the boat and row to shore. Simon, the fisherman, has never witnessed such a thing. He now understands who this Jesus is and is terrified. He immediately gets on his knees in front of Jesus and exclaims, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Jesus, in only the way he can, kneels down to Simon and says, Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Bible Backdrop. Today, we'll be looking at jobs people had in the economy of Bible times. People had to earn a living, and they did it in a number of ways. As the story shows, fishing was important to the economy of the ancient world, and we'll get into that a little later. The majority of people, especially early on in Bible times, worked in agriculture and livestock. As we discussed in the last episode, land was owned and passed down through the extended families. Families worked the farms to produce enough for the family to eat and to sell whatever they could. In addition to growing food, many families also had herds of livestock, usually sheep or goats. Or if you are a rich family, you may also have cows and oxen. In the episode on food, we talked about how sheep was almost never eaten because they were more valuable for their wool. Goats were good for selling milk and cheese and also as a source of meat. Cows could be raised and sold for their meat or hides, and oxen were often used in the farming process. Oxen were a sign of wealth. When Elijah goes to anoint Elisha as prophet, he finds him plowing with 12 pairs of oxen. This means his family was very wealthy as, one, he had enough land that required that many oxen to plow his land, and two, that he had that many oxen to do it. Elisha then shows his wholehearted reaction in following Elijah by sacrificing all the oxen and using the plows to cook them, showing that he was leaving his old life behind. The chief crops raised during this time were fruit, such as pomegranate and grapes, olives, nuts, wheat, barley, and other cereals. The northern part of Israel, in Galilee, was very fertile and considered to be the breadbasket of the country. Vineyards of grapes were grown throughout the country, especially on hillsides where they could get good sun plus cool breezes. Grapes could be eaten as is, dried as raisins, and formed into cakes, or pressed and made into wine. Like I said earlier, most of the crops were eaten or stored for the winter. If there was an abundance or a family had a large amount of land, the excess could be sold at market. Society was full of day laborers who owned no land and could be skilled or unskilled workmen. These laborers could be hired to help with the planting or harvest and then could use the wages to buy food at the end of the day. The parable Jesus tells in Matthew 20, 1-16 shows that day labor was common enough that everyone would understand the story. Due to the mild climate of Israel, there was always something to be harvested and planted so that day laborers could find work. 
around September, October, it was usually the olive harvest. November, December was planting grain. January, February was late planting, usually millet, peas, lentils, melons, and cucumbers. March was the hoeing of flax. April was the barley harvest. May was a time of general harvest and festivals. June and July was always vine tending. August is when the summer fruit harvest happened. So there was always work to do for day laborers. Fishing was a fairly large industry by New Testament times. Simon, Andrew, and the sons of Zebedee, John and James, seemed to be partners in a fishing venture. Fishing can be done with a rod and line, a spear, or a cast net. Jesus tells Simon to use a rod and line to catch the fish with the shekel in its mouth to pay for the temple tax. Spear fishing was done at night with lanterns. When the fish were attracted to the light, the fishermen would spear them. Finally, there was net fishing, and this is the one most associated with the apostles. The cast net was a circular net with weights on it that carried the net to the bottom and captured the fish underneath. This was then brought up with the fish and other stuff from the bottom of the lake. There are 18 types of fish in the Sea of Galilee, but three of them were prized by fishermen. The first is the musht, which includes the tilapia galilea, also known as St. Peter's fish. The second is the biny, or barbel's fish, which is in the carp family and gets its name from the barbs in its mouth. Finally, the last one is the kinneret sardine, a small fish normally preserved by pickling. That could have been the fish the young boy provided in the feeding of the 5,000. All of them could be eaten, salted, or sold at market. Food was not only sold locally, but used in trade with other countries. In fact, trade was a thriving business in Israel. Consider where the country sits. For anyone in the Middle East to trade with Egypt or other countries in the West, the trade routes had to go through Israel. While the Israelites did not have a navy, or only a very small one, the Phoenicians, who lived in Tyre, had a massive trading network across the Mediterranean. Trading was minimal in the early history of the country. Local trading between tribes and even with the Philistines was about the extent of it. When Israel expanded under the monarchies of David and Solomon, trade greatly expanded. At first, it was mostly agricultural products. Wheat, olives, olive oil, figs, honey, oil, and balm. Archaeologists have also discovered that Israel traded oil and wine with Egypt where there was an abundance of grain. Later, wool and woolen cloths were exported. In return, there were imports of timber, metals, and luxury goods such as spices and jewelry. During Solomon's reign, he was able to direct caravans passing through the country to his own cities or to the cities of his allies, such as the Phoenicians in Tyre who supplied him with timber for his many building projects. The problem with this kind of trade is that it required extensive risk and capital. If successful, people could become very wealthy. Unfortunately, this led to an oppression of the poor, as is called out in Micah 2, 1 through 2. Quote, Woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them. They defraud people of their homes. They rob them of their inheritance. End quote. By New Testament times, trade was a way of life. Roman rule also brought the Pax Romana, the peace and unification the Romans had brought to the Mediterranean. This made travel safer and also brought the famous Roman roads, so travel was also easier. During this time, large quantities of olive oil were exported from Judea, while Greek wines, glass, apples, cheeses, linen, and cotton became common in the country. On that note, I think we'll stop here for this episode. Next episode, I'll continue this discussion and talk about other jobs that were done during Bible times. In the meantime, if you're enjoying Bible Backdrop, please leave a five-star rating and review. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email me at biblebackdrop at gmail.com. As always, word of mouth is the best way for this podcast to grow, so please tell a friend and have them subscribe. Bible Backdrop is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thank you again for listening, and have a great week.